Good afternoon or good morning um, if you're uh, on the West Coast. Um, my name is Jen Kennett. Um, I'm with Mosaic. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I think most of our people that signed up are, are really familiar. So they're here for you, Judy, <laughs> which is fantastic. So we're continuing our publisher showcase. And today we have Judy, Br Judy Brunswick from Owl Kids. Um, and uh, she is open to taking questions during the presentation. So I will keep an eyeball on that. Um, and uh, I pass any questions along to Judy as she's going. And of course, if there's any in the end, happy to do that. So once Judy does her presentation, we will pop over to Curation IQ and view the Owl Kids books um, on in, in the platform and some of the metadata around it. Um, so let me switch over to Hosts to you, Judy, and the floor will be yours. Okay, great. There's my there's my video. Hello, everybody. I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you today, uh, and I want to thank Jen for the opportunity to um, talk a little bit about some of our books and the range of what we have. And I have to be honest, when I was preparing for this, I had a real struggle because we have so many great books that I love to talk about, um, and so I had to make some choices. Um, but I, I, I think it'll be okay. I think I'm still showing you lots of things. And, uh, and when Jen goes over what's going on in curation um, IQ, uh, you'll see just how full our information is and, and different ways that you can find it there. I am going to jump into sharing my screen and have a PowerPoint, um, which will take me a couple of seconds just to manage. I'm hoping that you see um, our cover slide. Um, yes, Jen? Yep. You give me a nod. Okay, good. I can see you. Perfect. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so I'm going to um, I, I'm going to warn you the next few slides are a whole bunch of words, but after that we get into lots of book covers. So it's all okay. It's not all going to be words. I wanted to give you a little bit of background about us um, and uh, and just you know, give you a sense of how long we've been around and, and what some of our roots are. In 1976 in Toronto, Canada, there were a couple of visionary women who founded something called the Young Naturalist Foundation. Um, and they started a magazine at that point focused on kids and the environment. A few years later, and that's Owl Mag, which is now called Owl Magazine. Um, a few years later, Chickadee Magazine and Chirp, um, and that was, a, was several years later, and you can see the age ranges that those magazines um, represent. And of course, when you create great magazine content, book content um, seems to be a natural, and they started developing books. There were a couple of imprints that spun off um, to be independent uh, over the intervening decades. But in 2008, um, what was Maple Tree Press um, at that point was reacquired by Owl Kids to bring it back into the fold and work with the magazines. And really, I'm gonna say that those um, past 13 years have really been what shaped the company that we are today. So, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, we publish 25 to 30 new books a year, and our focus is ages zero to 13. And really, the, our, our key categories have driven um, the, what, we, what we've been, and the ways we've been trying to, to uh, grow. We have about 250 books in print at this point. So our key categories here are picture books, and they include um, in, uh, informational picture books, and they cover a lot of themes and talk topics, ranging from really funny to very poignant and deeply meaningful. Our nonfiction um, is it's both award winning and very popular with kids. And we often take a unique approach that is allowed to us by being an independent publisher, often publishing things that would never make it past a big editorial board in a, in a different company. And then um, graphic novels and fiction. Well, somebody at JLG told us that we were really smart to get on the junior graphic novel stream really early, and we did and have had some very nice success with that. And um, as with our fiction, we focus on uh, chapter books and middle grade levels for those uh, for those categories. We sell directly into Canada and the US via distributors and sales reps, uh, and then we spend a lot of time licensing our books all the way around the world. And then in terms of our list, we have, um, you know, we are leveled and aligned. So we're aligned with curriculum, we're aligned with uh, Common Core, we're aligned with next generation science standards. We've got um, Fontas and Pinnell, Lexile and Reading Recovery leveling. We've got age and grade ranges, 
BISAC and Thema. We actually are known by both sets of our sales reps as the gold standard in metadata for publishers. And this is despite our relatively small size, um, but we are pretty advanced on that, on that area. And our marketing manager can take great pride in, in that because she works very hard at it. And then, of course, we've got lots of keywords. Um, and then we also cross reference all of our books in over 20 different topic areas. And some of the ones that, that we include, I've, I've listed here on the right, and you can see how wide ranging they are. <clears throat> and in fact, many of our books fall under multiple topic areas. And as we as I go through some of the examples, uh, you will see, you'll see what I mean. Then uh, in terms of um, the hard work that we've been doing over the last 13 years, it's really paid off with a growing reputation for books that can be quirky or prescient or timely or breaking new ground or just plain good reads. <clears throat> We, uh, for instance, over 2020 and 2021, we received 26 starred reviews. It's not bad for a company that only publishes 25 or 30 books a year. Uh, you can see on this slide, the different places that we've been recognized in the US, Canada, and around the world. Um, so we regularly get starred reviews from the, from the publications on the left. And you can see a wide variety of, uh, of acclaim on the right. Um, I'll bring to your notice at the very bottom, the 2018 nomination for the Bologna Ragazzi Prize for the best North American children's publisher, which is again, nicely significant for a company of our size. Okay, enough of all that text. It's time for some book covers and time to, to take a look at um, some of what we publish. So here I'm highlighting some of the books that got those accolades in 2020, and you can see what some of them are. Um, multiple starred reviews for some of the books and, uh, um, and recognition, year-end recognition. So Golden Threads is a beautiful picture book about a lost and found stuffed fox inspired by the concept, the concept of Kintsugi, which is a, the idea that you repair things that are broken with gold so as to highlight and celebrate the imperfections. Pretty Tricky at the top right uh, is um, a spectacularly beautiful book about how plants adapt in often deceptive ways <clears throat> to challenges in their environments. Uh, a Last Goodbye, which is in the middle there, I'm going to be talking about later um, in, uh, in, within the context of a series that it's published in. Bottom left, Pierre and Paul Avalanche, uh, is a completely unique approach to bilingual publishing with each kid speaking their respective language, uh, but it told through a continuous story. Trending is um, a tip of a, typical of our middle grade nonfiction with solid information on a topic like how and why trends develop and often told in a humorous way to engage kids. And I Do Not Like Stories um, is a delightful, um, kind of quirky book about a little boy who does not like stories, but ends up kind of liking them. And here in 2021, we don't have any awards yet because of course they're not giving them out yet, but we hope to maybe hear about something, some good news in 2022. But here are the starred reviews that we've gotten. Top left is The Wind in the Trees. And this is an eloquent story of the cycle of life as shown through the conversation between two trees. <clears throat> Barnaby in the middle is a picture book that explores what a beautiful budgie who ruled the roost does when some competition arrives. Journey Around the Sun uh, is an informational picture book that has Halley's Comet narrate many of its journeys and showing the cultural and scientific developments through history. The Midnight Club, The Sour Cherry Tree and Moon Pops at the bottom are all from our fall season. And of course, we're still expecting to see more reviews in our fall. So these are just some of the early stars. Um, and they are picture books that celebrate family, siblings, cultural history, and cultural history, for example. And then here we've got some key backlist, um, again, that very much award winning. We've got a couple of picture books um, and some nonfiction. Uh, you Are Stardust, again, is associated with A Last Goodbye, um, and it was published in uh, oops, I just realized that's a typo. It's the best of 2012, not 2021. Anyway, <laughs> um, 
but you can see it had lots of uh, attention and we took a very unique approach. Again, I'm going to be talking about it later. The paper boat from fall 2020, you can see four stars um, and lots and lots of different accolades. Um, it's by Tao Lam, who um, we've published uh, four of her books. We've got another one coming. And um, she is an amazing visual uh, communicator. And uh, this is the story of her family's uh, journey from Vietnam uh, in, uh, to Canada when she was just two years old. Uh, it's a wordless picture book. It's amazing. Off to Class is our best-selling backlist book. Uh, we sell tens of thousands of copies every year, and it's a wonderful look at um, education around the world. Killer Style on the bottom left is exactly the quirky kind of book that a company like Owl Kids can publish because it was actually based on a uh, a show that was happening in a museum here that uh, is, that discusses how fashion has killed over the ages. So toxic things like ar arsenic in dresses, that sort of thing. And again, because it's such a unique book, um, it was able to garner lots of attention, including uh, becoming the winner of the Norma Fleck Award, which is a major Canadian nonfiction award. Why do we fight in the art of the possible at the bottom uh, are both books that deal with kind of big topics uh, for kids aged 10 and up. And um, they really take, they're not, they're not about any particular place. They really are trying to explore the concept of what conflict is and then to explore the concept of what politics is, not just civics, but what politics is and how they play themselves out. Anyway, our, um, today I want to spend some time, so that's just a bit of background. I want to spend some time covering three different topics um, for you uh, uh, from our list. Um, diversity, social emotional learning, SEL, and STEM. So I'm going to start with diversity right now. And in our publishing program, we seek out good stories. Um, and many of those books, many of our books, that are, are diverse, um, cover a full range of diversity from own voices and BIPOC creators um, who tell of their own experiences to simply great stories where there's incidental inclusion and representation that also includes neurodiverse, neurodiversity, uh, um, a range of physical abilities and gender expression, as well as cultural diversity. So these books here from our fall 21 and spring 22 lists cover all of those areas. <clears throat> So uh, we've got The Sour Cherry Tree, which I've mentioned, um, Hold That Thought is a, a book about the idea of an idea and um, the protagonist uh, is, uh, 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 identifies as non-binary. Chaiwala, which I know is one of Jen's favorite books, um, is a beautiful story about um, the process of getting chai in a train station in Jaipur in India uh, with a mother and a daughter. And just that kind of taking a moment uh, for, uh, for respite before kind of moving on with a busy life. Miranda and the Legend of the Lake is um, a middle grade nonfiction, uh, sorry, fiction book where the protagonist um, is uh, walks with crutches, but it is not the crux of the story. The, that is simply an aspect of, um, of who she is. Um, Amazing Athletes is a book that um, talks about Paralympic, Canadian Paralympic athletes um, and shows just how amazing and determined they are. It's very inspiring. Um, those are all books that are, are available now. And then the three at the bottom, Pink is for Everybody, um, is, uh, is, is, tells you what it's about. The pink is for everybody. And it is about um, gender neutral self-expression. My Delicious Garden I put on here because it's a wonderful look at the 12 seasons of, um, or the 12 months of a year and a girl who wants to garden. And it is a um, non-traditional family in a rural setting, which makes it unusual, um, which, which is good. And then same here is one of our key titles coming in spring 23. And it deals with, <clears throat> excuse me, it deals with um, uh, kids around the world and how they are similar uh, and different. So we all have kind of the same needs, but kids around the world have different geographic, cultural, historical, regional, uh, socioeconomic, those socioeconomic differences, and yet they all want to learn. They want to try to figure out how to succeed. So the book really does a comparison of that. Then looking at um, some of our uh, diversity picture books, 
Um, and what I've done is because I had so many books, I've included lists on uh, some of these slides of other titles to consider so that you can take a look at them because I wanted to just highlight a few key ones. I've already, of course, talked about Golden Threads. Then if you look at A, a Little Miss Lou, this is a book about a girl who finds her own voice. Um, it, as told through the story of Louise Bennett Coverley, the Jamaican poet who popular, popularized the use of patois as a means of creative self-expression. Uh, Tao, a picture book, was just reviewed this past weekend in the New York Times, um, and we're pretty thrilled about it. It was called A Perfect Launchpad for Classroom Explorations of Everybody's Name and Deeply Touching. It, it is literally an exploration of the challenges that Tao had as a child in a classroom with a name like Tao. And the opening line is, it's not easy being Tao. Um, a really terrific picture book. And then Raj's Rule for the Bathroom at School is about a boy who won't pee anywhere but at home, and least of all at school. Uh, he comes up with some coping mechanisms, but um, something happens that's kind of funny and that frees him of that rule and gives him a whole new lease of, on, on life. Then in terms of some of our nonfiction, um, I've got four of our, some of our best-selling books here. A Ticket Around the World is um, a title that has a boy um, travel to 13 different countries around the world and visit friends there. And so there are lots of cultural um, and geographic details in each of those countries. The Last Train is a book written by the wife of a Holocaust survivor who was a child during his internment. And the amazing story that echoed decades later thanks to an American high school history project. Off to Class, I've mentioned already, it's our best-selling backlist book. And what and published just last year, What If Soldiers Fought With Pillow is an inspiring book that looks at how the seemingly impossible can be possible through determined actions and creative thinking. And this includes profiles from people around the world. Now moving on to social emotional learning. Um, and I have to get my page right, sorry about that people. <laughs> Anyway, this is a we, we've got a pretty broad ranging uh, set of books in this category, uh, and I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I'm going to start with our front list. So these are books from fall 21 or spring 22. Sour Cakes at the Top Left is a sibling story that shows how accepting and, uh, and sitting with big feelings can make a really big difference. It touches on issues of mental health as well. The deepest dig there at the bottom shows how a boy's determination and curiosity enable him to stand firm against doubting adults, the doubting adults around him to unearth an astonishing discovery. And then the other three books are actually books coming in our spring list. While We Wait is at once a wonderful intergen intergenerational story, a lesson in patience with a payoff, um, and it's told in wonderful rhythmic language. It has the added bonus of including crafting through the story. Free at the bottom is a seemingly simple picture book about the about treating others well, about creative problem solving, and frankly, of undercutting bureaucracy. You have to read it to find out. The Tunnel uh, is a moving look at how to deal with big feelings when something bad happens and coming to understand that your connection to family is what will truly help you. <clears throat> now, some of our picture book backlist. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> is uh, at the top left, we've got Ira Crumb Feels the Feelings uh, by Nassim Rab, who uh, has done two Ira Crumb books for us, but was also uh, the author of another publisher's book, Weekend Dad, that had, that had lots of accolades last year. Uh, and she's also the author of The Sour Cherry Tree, uh, which is our front list, one of our front list titles. Anyway, this is book two in the Ira Crumb series, and it deals with the weight of feelings, but in a really, really funny way, it might include a fart joke. Uh, sometimes a wall um, on, uh, on the right is explores how walls can provide both openings and barriers depending on the situation and how people's behaviors and attitudes can affect that. Then the cone cat. Well, you see Jeremy. There he is. He's got the cone of shame and um, he does not know what to do with himself until he realizes through a little bit of perseverance um, and some trial and error that he can overcome uh, or should I say overcone the problem. Sorry, I couldn't resist that. My coworkers are just going to be groaning. Um, 
anyway, uh, and, uh, <laughs> um, and then finally, Alice and Gert is an updated version of the ant and grasshopper story that supports the notion that both workers and artists contribute to society. And then a long list of um, other social emotional learning um, picture books listed on the right. And a quick look at um, our fiction list, and I'm going to spend a bit of time on the three books on the left, which is the Mes West Meadows Detective series. This is an illustrated chapter book series fe featuring Myron on the autism spectrum and Hajra, diagnosed with ADHD, who team up to solve mysteries uh, in their school. Along with other neurodiverse kids, they are, they are able to show that their exceptionality is exactly what makes them exceptionally good detectives. On the right, Maurice and his dictionary is a middle grade graphic novel that tells the author's father's story of escaping Europe with his family in World War II, finding refuge in Jamaica, and using an amazing desire to gain an education to learn English, English and become a lawyer, which he in fact did all on scholarships and um, moved to and, and got a scholarship at the University of Toronto and, and uh, Kerry Fagan, his son lit, still lives in Toronto now. Okay, I'm going to jump to some STEM, um, another very rich category for us. And um, I think, as I mentioned, we often, although not always, use humor as an entry point to engage kids in science, and have found this to work really well for us. If I look at the um, STEM front list um, that we have coming this fall and in the spring, I'll start at the, with Small But Mighty, which is a book that shows how the tiniest of creatures can have a really big impact on ecosystems and the environment. <clears throat> and then on the right, Fred and uh, Marjorie, A Doctor, A Dog and the Discovery of Insulin is a middle grade graphic novel that tells the story of how Banting and Best discovered insulin 100 years ago. It is the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin, it was done right here in Toronto, um, and has, of course, saved millions of lives since. Um, one important fact about this book is that dogs were, uh, uh, well, about the history, but also how the book deals with it, um, is that dogs were used in the research. And of course, this is an ethical issue. And there is a section at the back of the book that does um, treat the ethics of animal testing and, and deal with um, current thinking on that subject. And then finally, at the bottom right, um, B and Fleet, uh, sorry, I missed it at the bottom left, <laughs> Dig Dance Dive, um, which is an entertaining look at how particular birds have had to adapt to, more, to do more than fly in order to survive where, where they are in different places around the world. And then at the bottom right, Bee and Flea, which is the start of a new chapter book series that is both a story of an unlikely friendship between a bee and a flea, uh, as well as a secret look at how compost heaps work. There's even actually a quiz at the end of the book. So there's lots of hidden science in this really great story. And then, whoops, I have to wave my hand here because we have um, lights that are motion sensors. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, STEM, sorry, um, and now I'm thrown, thrown off here. Okay, STEM picture books are some of our backlist. Um, I've picked a few here with a list on the right. I Am Josephine is a picture book that has the titular character showing kids how to understand the classification of living things, but through a picture book. Uh, Winter's Coming is a story told by Lily, the snowshoe hare about seasonal adaptation. Uh, I've talked about Journey Around the Sun already. And Earthrise is a picture book about the 1968 flight of the uh, Apollo 8 and the famous photo that, uh, of the earth that helped inspire the environmental movement. I mentioned um, both Alas Goodbye and You Are Stardust earlier, and now I'm showing you the whole list and uh, collaboration that's a unique series between Ellen Kelsey and Soya and Kim. And what it does is it, pick, it positions big scientific ideas for a picture book audience using very poetic language and intricate and really imaginative uh, 3D diorama artwork. You Are Stardust uh, was published in 2012 and it started it all, it showed kids um, that they, like so many beings through, through the millennia, are made from the very first star that burst. Wild Ideas shows how nature can inspire creative thinking. You Are Never Alone shows how animals protect each other and us and how humans are part of, obviously, that, uh, the animal kingdom. 
And then A Last Goodbye shows how animals mourn their dead, providing a wonderful opportunity to explore the topic of grief and death in a wide range of circumstances. And all of these are used to really build the connections that kids have with nature very directly. Um, lots of great, great sales, wonderful content, um, and really a unique approach. Then I've got some STEM math. Um, <clears throat> The four books on the left, um, in the middle and the left, um, are the Math and Nature series. This is a terrific cross-curricular introduction over the four books to four primary math concepts. Um, and of course, underlying that is there's also science, literacy, and inspiring artwork um, in this mix. Flow, Spin, Grow is um, a, an exploration of patterns in nature through a picture book. And uh, Anything is Possible is uses math allusions to show how unlikely problems can be solved, like the way that a sheep and a wolf can actually become friends. Then uh, I've got some STEM nonfiction for you to look at. Um, do Frogs Drink Hot Chocolate and Do Lizards Eat Ice Cream are uh, the first two books in, in what is now kind of an ongoing loosely based series asking these Maybe silly questions, um, but you by using these silly questions, you're really engaging kids in to learn about science. Um, and so uh, this is for the five to eight age range. It's catching and biometrics are examples of solid award winning, winning STEM for middle grade students that we publish. And then a beginner's guide to immortality shows how we can take a unique look at a subject and include STEM history, literature and legend and explore a fascinating topic. Whole bunch of other STEM nonfiction on the right here. And that is it, I could talk about lots of books um, and even just in these categories, but I'm going to stop. Um, if you'd like, I'd love to have you follow us on social media, find out what we're doing, or would love to have you come to our um, newly minted uh, owlkidsbooks.com website, um, check out resources that we have there, sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in the know. Um, and at this point, I'm going to exit the show and hopefully stop sharing and give it back to you, Jen. <laughs> You're still muted. I always do that. <laughs> so thank you so much. Do we have any questions for Judy? Just pop them in. Um, it, you know, it's the typical webinar format. You have to put it into the chat or um, ask via the Q and A. Um, but if anything comes to mind, um, you know, feel free to do that. And Judy, I have to say that I feel your pain. I, I, I do love Chaiwala. It's just the art is beautiful, and there's so many like. Uh, the onomatopoeias in there are really awesome. It's a great way to introduce young kids to it. Um, but every time you had a new slide up, I'm like, oh, but I love that one too. Oh, but I love that one too. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, I'm a bit biased, but I love all of our books because I think they just have so much merit uh, across so many different ways. Um, and we take so much care in how we publish every single book that we do because we don't do that many every year and we really want them to, to make a difference and to count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very telling in your content, and the the interdisciplinary part of it is really uh, key too. I mean, there's just there's um, those books do cross sectionalize a lot. Um, there's they, they really kind of approach kids from that multi angle, um, and um, I've like I was working on some of the tagging to make sure it was up to snuff, you know, for the meeting and everything, and the new books because we just got on the spring books. Um, and uh, it was just, I was just having such a good time. And um, same here is really amazing. As a brand new book, if you have not been in, in Curation IQ and I can pop in and show it to you, but um, it's, it's fantastic. It covers kids across the world on education, communication, food, and those different elements that are, are different for the same. And it gives you just this awesome tour uh, so many different places um, and, and you can feel the connectedness between it all. It was just, I love that one. And just one thing, if I may add about Same Here, which is a really terrific book, um, is that we had very deep um, readings, diversity readings, and, uh, you know, we did a very deep assessment of that book to, to ensure that we were presenting, you know, a balanced view. Excellent. Um, awesome. So I will go ahead and, um, Go to Curation IQ and, and I'll just mute myself until, unless there are questions and then I can pop yeah, back in. I will definitely let you know. Uh, am, should I be making you a co-host? Sorry. <laughs> I think I 
I can switch it. Yeah, okay. I can do that on my end. I know transition are, transitions are not always very lovely, but we do what we can with what we have. Um, all right. Um, so again, I think most people that signed up were are familiar uh, with us. Um, but if just in case, if not, um, the platform to see the books um, will be it's curationiq.com. You do have to register for an account um, if you don't already have access, um, just a name and an email to sign up. And we just want to make sure that you know you're on the instructional assessment designer side because um, that's this tool is custom made for that. Um, and then we'll give you access and then you can sign in. Awesome. So up at the top, you'll find the publisher list and go down to bookends. And there is a separate tab to load the magazine content should you want to look at that and the Al Connected content. They do a lot of great online content as well, um, which is fantastic for that short form content um, across different uh, subjects. So you just click Al Kids Books there. That's will load all Al Kids books. And another thing to mention would be that one of the great advantages of, of this tool and working with publishers that way we do is that we get the newest books as soon as possible. Um, so you're going to see books in here for for spring that um, I don't think they're out anywhere, are they, Judy? Can't see them anywhere else. They are not out. Uh, I mean, they might be. We might. I don't even know that we have any of them on NetGalley yet. Um, we might because of um, SLJ Day of Dialogue, we might have a few of them because we've got some of the uh, creators um, talking on panels, but, uh, but generally speaking, there are not many places you can see these books. Awesome. They, don't, they don't actually publish till March and April of next year. So it's um, kind of like an exclusive club. Um, so these are definitely the, the ones we're going to see at the top are, are pretty much uh, those those spring brand new books. Another one that I don't think I mentioned that is really beautiful is a park connects us, um, which talks about that urban park. And and one of the ways I love the title when you read the book is how it does connect you. You think about the many different entrances of a park and then everybody comes together from these all walks of life and can participate in activities and the art is really beautiful. Um, so it, this is a little um, description of it. Um, we have, uh, you know, the keywords. Um, do appreciate your great um, metadata. Um, it, it's it, it's very true. Um, the metadata is always really important, and it's not always um, available. But then you go ahead and click here, and this is how you will see the book. And I just want to show some of the art real quick. There we go. Different ways of saying hello. Um, there's my delicious garden. This is really beautiful. I love this book too. Um, so as Judy mentioned, it mentions that the 12 months also, you know, rolls through the, the seasons and the planting and the whole cycle of planting. Um, so, you know, you're dealing with cycles of nature and plants and trees. And then um, at the end, uh, how they come to benefit from that, that harvest and their hard work. Um, it's January, February, how it starts from, from planting to from plan to table i just made up a new term instead of seed <laughs> yeah i heard that there's a new trend it's it's now from um it's going from seed to table so this is even pre-seed so and then i'm just gonna flip down to the and if, and if i can just jump in one of the things i love in this book is the agency that the girl has in managing her own garden she gets help from her parents, but she really is the one who's doing the dreaming and the managing and that, and that's such a great uh, opportunity for kind of school situations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, oh, I got to show a scene here real quick. Free was really fantastic too. You cheer for them so much and you're like, yes especially these days, it's very timely, excellent choice. Um, so 
a little introduction here. And it, this is the areas that it will cover housing and education and food. Um, Very and, and, and if I can just say something about it, there's there it, for each topic, there's kind of a two page spread that um, that introduces the concept. And that was one of them and then starts showing kids around the world on that same topic. Yep. And diverse households. Yes. One thing is um, also socio socioeconomically diverse. Mm hmm. I'm just going to say a whale's world 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 is not our book but anyway <laughs> which one i just scroll up a, a whale's world. world yeah i'm not sure I who's that double is. check that why that's, that's all right there. doesn't it matter but yeah actually one thing if you've got tau up there which you were close to mm -hmm. or the sour cherry tree which is a uh, which is um we do that one. from the fall and is one of the things that's that's um wonderful about this is that it is a look at um, a grandfather's death from a young girl's point of view and both the author and the illustrator have per Persian backgrounds and those um, elements come through in the visuals uh, and they shared a lot of their own stories and so little personal um, elements come up in the illustrations. Perfect. And that's stuff that we do flag for. So you'll see here, um, you know, obviously SEL, um, but then as well that they're, uh, you know, uh, we something we try to just say, hey, let, let people know. Um, and um, when if you do need to use something and you kind of need to, if there's something sensitive to a child, especially in the assessment world, um, and you need to exclude that. Um, Alkids is great about working with you know the proposed uses. You you know you provide that to us and just let us know that you want to, what material you would want to exclude and um, work with Judy and and to get that. We've not had any any issues as long as there's not changes to the integrity of the material. Um, and then too, as you can see over here um, on the left, the metadata for um, this is pertaining to the result set, which is all of Alkids. Um, so you can kind of see the, the range across different, um, so classification, so there's genres, um, author craft, author origins, so go too fast, multicultural representation, gender representation in the main characters, um, at main, main character ethnicities and regions and settings, all that's over here as well um, to filter when you're looking for specific things. This is definitely one I've seen a lot of interest in in Earthrise as well, because I think that there's some sort of a, there's a standard, um, I don't remember what grade level about, um, a, a text talking about a photograph and what meaning that has. So, um, but yeah, since we're here, <laughs> might as well look at Chaiwala. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. And um, it, I, the introduction to what, what most people know is Chai that they maybe, maybe don't kind of realize the origin of the drink. And, mm -hmm. and, and that it is in fact a profession you know, the, the expertise of making a really great cup of chai is something. Um, one of the challenges though, is that because the, the, the images show a single, single pages versus spreads, mm -hmm. you may not get the kind of full effect, um, especially in that one two page spread with all of the scents and the, um, that's I think a little, but you get that, yeah, that's this one, which is half of it. And then the other half really shows you, um, just that's that it, it, it really makes it kind of multi sensory, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, why one of the reasons I love the book, it re, you really feel like you're there, it, it creates that presence. Um, and uh, so, you know, we do allow the downloads, um, you know, you would request that. And I believe in the download, it's going to present the file um, as provided. So if it was a spread, I think that you'll be able to, to see it as a spread. So yep, okay. um, I, I don't think that's a problem. Or if, if somebody needs something different, of course, they know they can always get in touch yep. with us to do that. Yeah, because especially for picture books, although for our, our nonfiction too, we really deal with the books as the spread, the, the impact of the full spread. Mm -hmm. 
for sure. And I'm a big fan of this one too. I just, it's so interesting. Um, there, and there's been a lot of interest in the different ways, uh, of different types of plants and their own defense systems and yeah. And and pretty, like tr pretty tricky. So what's interesting is, is I think you really like Ashley Barron because a lot of her artwork and she did amazing work in pretty tricky um, because, um, you know, she does normally does picture books or, and, and younger picture book, but books, but she did some really wonderful research with that. Can you open a, uh, sorry, go ahead. When, when you're okay. done, if you could go to Alaska by uh, or one of the Alaska by is probably a good, um, you just, there it is because I loved people to see the artwork. <clears throat> yeah, the artwork is really uh, Because the, the three-dimensional dioramas are unbelievable. And so what you see there are the strings because they're, they're three-dimensionally done in big boxes. Unfortunately, you don't get the sense of the spread here, but, um, but you can see the depth of field um, and all the care that goes into not only creating the art, but also photographing it so that you get that feel. Also, this is like a four hanky picture book, um, as far as I'm concerned. Every time I read it, I end up crying because it really is such a beautiful way of exploring how various animals deal with death within their, within their um, species um, and the parallels to humans, of course, because we, we too are animals, um, are, is amazing. And it's just so beautifully done. Yeah, I can see that. So I was trying to just kind of move fast because especially, you know, there was an article recently about how um, elephants mourn. Um, I think it was in the Washington Post. Yeah. Um, so that would, you know, when you think about paired passages as well, um, I know it might be a tough, tough subject for um, instruction space, um, but still it's, it, it, there's great ways that you can kind of pair that um, that's done in a more soft and literature style along yeah. with that factual based mm -hmm. um, part. Um, which really helps kids understand the different ways that animals um, communicate and how we're similar to them. Uh -huh. um, so, so yeah, we're coming up on time. Um, uh -huh. So I will just double check back in to see if there's. Um, I, I don't know. see any questions. Yeah, I am not seeing any either. Um, so I guess that means that we were incredibly thorough. <laughs> Um, <laughs> gave lots of food for thought let's put it that way <laughs> yeah um so yeah it's if there's any you know questions after the fact um i would you know deeply encourage everybody um to to go into curation iq and check out um all the all kids books um the, the, they're so beautiful so so beautifully done and so thoughtfully done you can tell that you take the 30 books a year that you do um very seriously um and uh, they're just we're thrilled to have you guys as a partner. Well, we're thrilled to have more people take a look at our books and see how how some of the content can be used in other ways to just help kids uh, kind of expand their understanding of the world. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. I hope the rest of your afternoon is fantastic. I appreciate it very much, Judy. And, Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Have a great day, you guys. Oh, wait. One. Just want to make sure there's no question. Oh, there's we got to thank you. <laughs> So thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, guys, signing off. Bye-bye.